everyone here good great welcome to the tape group welcome to the world is new tape group and based on the book on the book the world is new by joel goldsmith and this is the tape group variety you could say and the tape group variety um, say comes with a tape while the book is not based on tapes so that is that's quite something that's really lovely it's a it's a beautiful addition to the book and to bring it to life with joel's voice is really wonderful so we'll listen to that later in uh, uh, spiritual freedom no freedom spiritually discerned i think it's 384 b or something tape but we'll see that later so that's coming up in the last half hour just about and um, so the great uh, say the great chapter of today is called um, spiritual freedom and that is an interesting term as if there are different kinds of freedom so this is the spiritual freedom and Joel uh, uses this expression um, related to an uh, to the freedom that you find in knowing yourself and coming to the realization of is and uh, so that's yeah where we focus on so you can say like the chapters are evolving in the book and so we had uh, spiritual living last week and now it's spiritual freedom and then we go we go further you know it's like yeah it continues so it's there are deep themes in realization you could say while it's all the same realization and so we we go through different aspects of it in the uh, in the recognition of our transformational let's say development that is taking place in us basically uh, that has to do with the all the things that we are not all the ideas of values that we have placed that we have to bring back to ourselves instead of putting it out there it's like no no there's nothing out outside yourself there's one consciousness and it's yours so in fact we're we're inviting everything in again it's like we could call it forgiveness it's like seeing that everything has to do with you with how you were perceiving it and how you responded to it but in fact nothing happened here um, and so that's an advanced vision you could say this is the christ vision that's given by the master by jesus christ and like i'm not of this world like whatever you think this is going on here i'm not of this world so if you recognize me you cannot see me like you cannot see me where i go you cannot go and this is not some kind of mystery talk but it is like no where i am going you cannot come you cannot go and why is that because if you think in terms of limitation any kind of limitation you wouldn't know what freedom is you would not know where i abide is what jesus says and what joel says in spiritual living of yeah in spiritual freedom so today we try to discover more of that while you as you know yourself in the definitions that you make of yourself are not able to actually enter into that experience only by allowing a change to occur in your consciousness where in fact you open up your consciousness for the communication of what already is in you now this this whole th process you could say is is an amazing process it is an undoing of an idea that you are this an idea of an undoing that you are located in time and space in a body with other bodies now if that is not like that asks for a physical resurrection that asks for physical transformation that asks for changes that are occurring that are um, it's like in fact you have to allow this change to occur within you 
but within the, all the definitions of you, within how you see yourself and all this. So in fact, as Joel says many times, this has actually to do with an, with an act of dying daily to your humanhood, giving up every idea that you have been holding on to, holding on to any idea that is related to time, that is temporal, that is finite. So this is what we call the dream, and this dream you need to wake up out of. That's why we call it a spiritual awakening. Now you see I'm mentioning this short in a short overview, but in fact it is the process where you're going through in order to realize that you are free. Now that's an interesting idea. It's like if you are free, then you should be able to feel that, or to experience that. And, and now well, you know why that isn't that case. And you will not experience yourself as in the definitions of yourself as completely free. You will always bump up against a limitation. Up to the point that you start to give up any definition that you held about yourself. And see that that was just an, another way, another temptation, you could say, or denial of the truth of what you are. And you have, yeah, you have entertained that for some time, for some lifetimes, for who knows how long. So the undoing, the change that is occurring in this, it takes a moment too, and that is perfectly all right. But for one thing, it is a very physical process, and you cannot avoid that. Since every occurrence is related for you, every memory you have is related to this thing, <laughs> um, so yeah, the undoing of those memories, the setting them free, will be a physical process. It's inevitable. All right. Now, in order to come to an uh, say a receptance, to a receptivity for what is given, it always is of great help to become still because it calms down your mind all the concepts that are like circling around and are tempting you and are you want to follow them or not but for now we're going to let them pass by as the clouds in the sky we, we see them but we're not doing anything with them they float away and uh, in the same time you can have a feeling that you sink deeper in yourself you feel that emotions that are coming up you want to release you want to to breathe out to to let them go in order to sink even deeper to a peaceful state of mind and that is very well possible in meditation so just keeping a couple of things in mind letting go breathing relaxing there's no accomplishment here, so it's coming to you. You just open up to be receptive. And open your consciousness up to be receptive. So I'm, I'm going to share a uh, pre-made video that I made for as a meditation. And the interesting thing is that Joel had one in one of his talks, he uses Habakkuk uh, 20, um, of 2 verse 18 to 20 and i'm using that too in this meditation combined with something of the an expression that he makes in the tape that we're going to listen to later freedom spiritually discerned so anyway so that's what you can expect and we're going to contemplate meditate that say for maybe 10 15 minutes What profit is the image that its maker should carve it? The molded image, a teacher of lies. That the maker of its mold should trust in it to make mute idols? Woe to him who says to wood awake, to silent stone arise, it shall teach. Behold, it is overlaid with gold and silver, yet in it there is no breath at all. But the Lord 
is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. I and my father are one. Now try to hold my father in bondage. And I and my father are one, not two. Where I am, my father is. Where my father is, I am. For we are one and not two. I am not mortal or material, but spiritual. I am not visible, but invisible. Son saint temple. À quoi sert l'image que son créateur sculpte L'image moulée enseignant de mensonge. Pour que le fabricant de son moule lui fasse confiance, faire des idoles muettes Malheur à celui qui dit au bois Réveille-toi à la pierre silencieuse. Lève-toi. Cela enseignera. Voici, il est recouvert d'or et d'argent et pourtant, il n'y a aucun souffle dedans. Mais le Seigneur est dans son saint temple que la terre se taise devant lui. Moi et mon Père ne faisons qu'un. Maintenant, essayez de garder mon père en esclavage. Moi et mon père sommes un, pas deux. Là où je suis, mon père est. Là où est mon père, je suis, car nous sommes un et non deux. Je ne suis ni mortel, ni matériel, mais spirituel. Là où est mon Père, je suis, car nous sommes un et non deux. Je ne suis ni mortel, ni matériel mais spirituel. Je ne suis pas visible, mais invisible. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. So there was an actual Swedish choir singing a French song. I thought that was interesting. So they did that. Beautiful. Thank you so much for joining. Um, yeah, today the the freedom, spiritual freedom with Joel, it is an interesting chapter in the book because in fact it talks uh, most of the chapter about bondage. So it's like, yeah, okay, so apparently we you have to look at something here in this uh, theme. We love to read about spiritual freedom and the beautiful uh, qualities of it and the whole idea of freedom great you know, wonderful we're looking for it every day for for some sense of freedom it's inevitable it's like it's inherent in in the human mind to look for it now that is interesting of course so coming back then to the human mind and uh, say this is yeah, as well by Mary Baker as Joel being mentioned, the mortal mind is a mind that thinks that it was born and thinks it will die, that is, at a certain point will die. Now, that is exactly, uh, in fact, what uh, yeah, needs to be undone or, yeah, it will, it will be shown to you that has no reality by you, say, in fact, getting new experiences that are um, say so convincing that you will never doubt ever again that there's such thing as death so in fact you're being made ready to experience that and yeah you you determine in a certain sense you determine how fast that will go so 
in order to experience that, in order to let that idea come to you, it is important to let go of the ideas that you hold, you know, to let them. So you have to become aware of what you're actually thinking. That's why Joel puts it in this chapter too. It's like, well, this, 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 this. It's, it's a whole list of things. We're going to take a look at that, of course. And um, so that that is helpful to at least become aware of of things that you take for yeah for normal you could say as ordinary as like okay that's how it is to um, to see that that's actually not how it is in reality that's always like 180 degrees upside down you need to think about security safety healthy food and this and that and joel comes with the ideas like no that's all taken care of for jesus too is like don't don't have any ideas about what to eat what to wear where to go whatever it's like that's all taken care of well this is probably for you not how you live your life most of the day so you think you're determined by others your others tell you what to do or you're yeah you you set up your life that way literally you organized it that way with with characters outside yourself that tell you something and that have a certain influence on how you behave so this is just one of them but there are i think five or six that joel is uh, sharing maximizing it the spiritual way of life leads to spiritual freedom which is a quality or condition of being that comes as a result of the attainment of truth itself. And yeah, actually as an experience of that, right? So the spiritual way of life leads to spiritual freedom, which is a quality or condition of being that comes as a result of the attainment of truth itself in your consciousness. Because truth is of course already true. Now this is the attainment of truth in your consciousness. That's in fact where everything is heading to in the infinite way teaching. Joel says, let us consider the idea of bondage, a bondage to a person. Like, okay, yes, imagine you're a mother. You probably have like an a bond a, yeah bondage to your child you want to keep an eye on your child you take care of it you eh, you have a real uh, close relationship in that sense in which you um yeah deal with that and be part of that joel uses this specific expression that's why i'm using it too so the fear of leaving familiar surroundings keeps you in place right so it's like yeah you you're familiar with a certain surrounding you'd rather not go you don't want to leave that thinking that it brings some kind of safety right you recognize it you know where things are and you think that that's your form of safety and comfort because you you cannot not look for that so it is with the bondage to a paycheck. Like imagine that you didn't get your paycheck. Uh, yeah, that, that didn't feel right, probably. Like then you would be in stress or you would be totally fearful not to get that. Now what, yeah, what is that? That's bondage to a paycheck. And bondage to superstition. If I do this and this, that might affect that and that. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about this. It might be that. Like all kinds of assumptions, superstitions about situations. Bondage to heredity. Thinking that you're one of the many in your uh, hereditary um, background. So like there's a grandfather, there's a grandmother, there's a... Yeah, on and on and on they influence you is what you can think they influence you in your behavior in the way that you present yourself in habits maybe or things that are so familiar to you that you say like yeah that's part of the <laughs> in the family we do it like this 
see uh, this is not about the defenses against that you you believe this to be your um, identity in fact you're bound by your ideas you you based everything on these ideas that's why the the, the tr yeah the change into an um, into an spiritual freedom the change into um, dying daily will really feel like a death in the beginning believe in contagion believe in infection believe in climate the effect of climate on you like if you if you're in the draft you might get a cold and Joel uses this many times like all of this it's, it's all belief it's all a belief system you believe that that is your reality because you base your reality on what you think you are that's inevitable now that's interesting isn't it now you probably recognize one or two of these uh, maybe all of them probably <laughs> So in other words, like in, in order to awaken, you will have to be um, you ha will have to be honest with yourself. Like, oh my God, that's actually my belief. I do believe that. That's unbelievable. <laughs> that's unbelievable. I want to. No wonder I have a conflict. I I want that. I see that as myself, and I want spiritual uh, freedom. And I think the two will meet at some point. And here's where, where, in fact, the conflict lies. It's like, no, only one of them is real. Now, I don't have to ask you which part of it. So this is, this is interesting. So in the undoing uh, of this, in the, in the process of transformation, of coming to the, say, spiritual freedom, you undergo the change of all these ideas that you didn't even know you were holding on to and defending and assuming and valuing all of this and there are so many um, all of this in fact puts you in a place that you cannot experience something else and you're okay with that so actually it's like do you really want spiritual freedom you would uh, say attain it right here on the spot it would would be given to you immediately it was just a matter of letting that go for a moment say putting back out of all your value that you, all your belief out of those situations in order to experience something new something else in order to enter into a, say the new world uh, where Joe is talking about in the book because in fact we're still on on track with that it's like now that's this is to discover a real world a world that is actually there and it has no buildings it has no say form but it is say a consciousness a state of your consciousness that is actually your reality if you enter into that realization you don't even remember this place called earth there would be no need for you to to come back to it what what would you possibly want from it and you say well i like this i like that and there is the list again so <laughs> you keep confirming the value that you put in the place that you find yourself because of the definitions that you hold about yourself so this is the situation that you're dealing with so are you able to get yourself out of your construct out of your bondage are you able to free yourself out of it by reading the right books by doing the exercises by doing this and that and that no no you're not able to do that and Joel will tell you that too it's like that's impossible because there literally is no overlap between what you think you are and the truth of who you are like there's no there's no overlap between your definitions and I am there's just no relationship to it so either one of them is true are you allowing that to be true for you that's in fact the only question they're not all like a checklist but this was one to enter deeply into the idea of bondage just in case um, so Joel says the antidote to all these forms of bondage is the first commandment thy shall not shall have no other gods before me 
no other power, no other presence, no other life, no other mind, no other intelligence, no other directing voice but God. This is literally from the text. It's like none of that, none of this, you could say. I'm bringing it back to, oops, bringing it back to the human experience. None of that. Freedom begins, Joel shares. Freedom begins when we recognize that God is divine consciousness and that his consciousness is yours and mine. Freedom comes not because of our relationship with God. Understand it well. Freedom comes not because of our relationship with God. It comes because of our conscious awareness of that relationship. And I put under there as an experience. In fact, as an experience of consciousness, of this communication. So freedom comes not because of, your, of our relationship with God. It comes because of our conscious awareness of that relationship. Yeah, just to make it not too mystical, you could say I put in as an experience. Because in fact, that's what we're dealing with here. So are you ready? Are you ready for an experience of your spiritual freedom? When you are, you immediately experience it. That's how simple that is. It will be your experience. And do you need any of your human ideas about that? No, not at all. Absolutely not. No, they're actually in the way of that. No, there's no other power. There's no, you know, like, like Joel sums up, like, no, none of this. No, that is not true. No, you don't need that either. No, you don't need your concerns. No, you don't need your family. No, you don't need your, in order to experience the totality of who you are, you don't need that. It's not that you cannot be with them or anything. It's like, no, I, here it is always like nothing is going to be taken away from you. There's nobody taking away anything from you. No, the realization lies in the fact that you suddenly start to uh, realize what is the truth about you and what the aspects that you have been valuing and putting outside yourself, thinking that it's part of you in some kind of relationship of your choice, um, thinking that that is your reality. So that's, that is the process and that is where we're into that's why we're discovering that's why we are on this um, journey to come to the point yeah, to come to the point of the infinite way the infinite way is not a transformational process the infinite way is that what is forever that is the realization of you you could say not as you know yourself but as you are what this is about as clear as I can express it at this point for uh, in relationship with the tape, for instance, that we're listening to and also what um, Joel writes in the book, which I'm going to read a little bit to you um, today. Um, oh yeah, so coming back to the idea of bondage one more time and then we leave that because that is activated, you could say. Our only bondage, if bondage, bondage it is, and it is a beautiful one, is to the Christ, the divine idea of government, the divine idea of infinite intelligence. And this is the only thing unto which we are subject. Divine consciousness, universal consciousness, that which we call God, which is individual consciousness, yours and mine, is the law of individual being. Through that we are given dominion over all that is in the sea, the earth, the air, the sky. When we either knowingly or unknowingly permit something in the realm of effect to be a law unto us, we have placed ourselves in bondage to it. Now this last sentence is of course an interesting expression in the sense of, oh yeah, wait a minute. 
So when we either knowingly or unknowingly, like conscious or not, like you can be aware of it or not, permit something in the realm of effect to be a law unto us, effect is in fact what we see, thinking that we're the cause of what we see, and that what we see has an effect on us, we have placed ourselves in bondage to it. We haven't recognized it for what it is, in fact. So, here's one more expression. Freedom begins when we recognize that God is divine consciousness and that his consciousness is yours and mine. I think there was one more part that I love to share. Oh yeah, the Christ is not a Christian. The Christ is not a Jew. The Christ is the divine spirit of individual being and is the spirit of God in man. Everybody has it regardless of race or religion. But unless you and I consciously accept it, we will not express it. And if we do not consciously accept it, those with whom we come in contact cannot feel it. Every time, Joel gives some expressions here, every time we go into a restaurant or a place of business, we feel the state of consciousness of the person who serves us. We recognize it for what it is. And so it is like, in fact, let's bring this back to yourself. Unless you and I consciously accept it, we will not express it. And if we do not consciously accept it, those with whom we come in contact cannot feel it. In other words, like this is all about you accepting this and accepting this for yourself, not taking, yeah, in fact, it doesn't matter what anyone else is thinking about it. This is about your personal uh, acceptance of it, letting that abide in you letting that dwell in you in the ways that are given us like opening your consciousness being becoming receptive and in fact that's all you can do and then the rest will come and like god knows his way to you if your if your altar is undefiled and the communication is right there if you still have some things that you want to hold on to you have defiled your altar it's literally, there's no way of uh, communication then. It's literally, you put it there. Now, this is a very individual, personal process, and there's no pressure. There's no accomplishment in it. No, there's more like, allow this process of undoing to take place, and uh, it, it will happen. You will be successful, because you were successful. It is accomplished. It is, it is taken care of. So every, you can also say, like every daily situation that you find yourself in that is coming back into your consciousness as a conflict or as a difficulty or as a this or that, is in fact uh, only helpful for you to, to recognize where am I actually thinking that I abide? What is it that I value so much and for what reason? What is actually going on? Why am I holding on to that one idea? Why do I think that is so important? It's like even more important than my God realization in my awareness. Is it really? Is it really that way for me? Well, then I have to be patient with myself for a moment. It will, it will pass. It will change. You can totally trust that. So no pressure. Well, on the other hand, once you start experiencing light and love and changes, in your consciousness, you want more of it. So it, it will attract you to go further and deeper into the, into the, in fact, surrender of what is. So that's so wonderful, it's so great. So thank you so much for letting me share this with you. And um, what I would like to do is listen to Joel. Nothing can enter from without. No powers external to us can operate in our consciousness or upon our lives except 
by our ignorance of spiritual truth, spiritual identity, and the fact that freedom isn't a physical thing, it's a spiritual entity. Now, be assured of this. If you hold freedom to be something of a physical nature that can be given to you or taken from you, so will it be unto you in accordance with your faith. But in that moment when you realize only by the grace of God do we have freedom, only by the grace of God do we have God's government, and that this is not at the mercy of man whose breath is in his nostril, that this cannot be given to us by princes nor taken from us by kings or potentates, only by the realization of the spiritual nature of freedom can we attain it and maintain it. Freedom isn't something you go out and fight for. The nations of the world have been going out and fighting for it since time began. And now, 7,000 years later, they're fighting for it on a wider scale than ever before, and there are fewer free places on earth than probably ever in history. I'm not a pacifist. I'm not trying to get the government to give up whatever mode or means it sees fit and the people of the country see fit. I'm talking now about first individual freedom and then the freedom that we can bring to the world that it itself never can bring. But not until we individually, just as one individual who attains some measure of freedom from the belief that disease is power or that disease has a law is enabled to be a law of freedom from disease unto others. So does anyone who attains some measure of freedom from lack and limitation become the law of freedom unto others? So in this wider sense, those who attain the realization of the spiritual nature of freedom and begin to perceive that temporal power cannot touch it, they first attain their own freedom and then help to establish that freedom for the entire world. It will be found that knowing the truth will enable the truth to make us free. Nothing else will make us free but knowing the truth. And the truth is that freedom is spiritual and that freedom cannot be taken from you. But please believe that first of all you must understand that freedom is something that cannot be given to you. Stop looking to somebody to give you your freedom. And be very watchful in your own thought to what extent you are holding someone else in bondage. Because the bondage that you are holding another in is the extent of the bondage that is holding you. As we learn to release God in the realization that without holding fast to God, without anxiety and concern, the sun will come up in the morning and go down in the evening, the tides will come in and they will go out. The stars will move in their courses. The crops will grow. And like will beget like. 
The potatoes will still produce potatoes and orchids will still produce orchids because of a law, a law that can never be broken. And so it is that your harmony, your peace, your abundance, your safety, your security, these are assured because of a spiritual grace, a spiritual law. My peace no man taketh from me, it is said. The Master cautioned about the sword. Put up thy sword, resist not evil, agree with thine adversary. So no, to accept the Christian teachings and not understand these passages means really not to accept them. You cannot accept what you do not understand. And so you must understand that the entire revelation of the Master is that God is the only power. Spiritual power is the only power, not temporal power. It is on this point that all freedom hinges. If you are going to give power to temporal power, then this philosophical jackass who is teaching rather red than dead would be true. What difference would it make whether Russia enslaved you this year or Hitler last year or somebody bobs up next year, the year after. But it isn't true that we must suffer slavery to avoid death. There is no such alternative in this world. The alternative is know the truth or be enslaved because then if it isn't an outside slavery it'll be one of your own mentality something within yourself some ignorance that will be enslaving you or a false appetite all forms of slavery aren't external there are lots of internal ones and all limitation is within ourselves there is no limitation external to us. You ought to see that now by this travel in space, that the only limitations are those that have been imposed upon us by widespread beliefs, just as before 1492. It was impossible to travel the seas why? There were no barriers out there, but there were the limitations of human knowledge. And this kept them within bounds so that no ship would go out of sight of land. So it is that there was no telegraph, no telephone. We were limited to conversations within hearing distance or correspondence within the limitations of communication. But these limitations did not exist in time and space. They l existed only in the minds of men. And the moment the minds of man could ex the mind of man could expand. Uh, we no longer had those limitations. And we had round the world conversations and round the world messages and so forth and so on. Limitation is due to ignorance. And limitation is a form of bondage. And bondage is due to ignorance. Slavery is due to ignorance. And it is the ignorance of this one point. Since freedom is spiritual, it is not at the mercy of matter. Since freedom 
is a God-given quality. It is not at the mercy of man. Freedom must be realized in consciousness, and then freedom will be expressed in daily life. You already know that there are some people living very comfortably free of most of the diseases of the world. You already know that there are individuals who are living free of economic fears, not because of the abundance of dollars that they have, but because of their spiritual realization of the nature of abundance. The Master was free of economic limitation, and yet he had no storehouses or bonds. Stop in this very hour. Stop believing that someone or something can hold you in bondage. Stop believing even that there is an ideology that can somehow embrace you and enslave you. Bondage is a self-imposed limitation due to the acceptance of a universal ignorance. Freedom is attained through knowing the truth. When you demonstrate the first real experience of freedom from something or someone whom you believe has held you in bondage, you will then be on the road to helping others attain their freedom. If there could be a formula to help us, it would be this. I and my father are one. Now try to hold my father in bondage. And I and my father are one, not two. Where I am, my father is. Where my father is, I am, for we are one and not two. I am not mortal or material, but spiritual. I am not visible, but invisible. Once we begin to perceive, even in a measure, that freedom is spiritual, it's the gift of God, the grace of God, a quality of God that is embodied in our own consciousness, and stop fearing. Stop fearing temporal power. Stop fearing persons. And realize that it is your relationship with God that constitutes your freedom, and you will demonstrate it. But while doing this, review in your own mind to what extent you may be holding others in bondage and begin to set them free. For in setting them free, you are setting yourself free, because inasmuch as you have done it unto one of these, the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. This truth maintained in our consciousness becomes a law of freedom unto all those upon whom our thought rests. In the degree that we are constantly setting free everyone in this world, releasing them into God, thereby releasing ourselves into our original relationship as children of God, one with God, 
in that degree we are setting those free who may be our neighbors, sometimes near neighbors and sometimes far neighbors, because there is no limitation to the extent of our consciousness. Our consciousness is not confined to this room, it is not confined to our bodies, and it is not confined to this room. Our consciousness is not even confined to this nation. And this we prove in the degree of healing work that takes place when we are helping students in, and patients in Africa or India, anywhere in the Orient or Europe, and then find that the consciousness of truth that we are realizing here in this room is operating as a law of healing on continents and islands far, far away. The reason is that this entire universe is embraced in consciousness, and since there is only one consciousness, the whole universe is embraced in your consciousness and mine. And therefore, what we set free in our consciousness is freed. And what we hold in bondage in our consciousness is not only held in bondage, but is also holding us in bondage. Make it a daily practice to set this world free, including God. Go ahead, God, be about your business. You take care of your business, and I'll be taking care of that which you give me to do. And then, to our friends and to our relatives, be ye free. I hold you in no obligation to me. Anything that I may do for you is done only as an act of grace from God through me to you. And I realize that you can do no more for me than the grace of God understood permits. But I hold you in no bondage because my sufficiency is of God. Thy grace, God, thy grace, Father, is my sufficiency. Therefore, I am not holding my family or my friends, my students or my patients in bondage to me. I loose you and set you free in God. I release you to God's care even as I am now released within myself in the spiritual truth that I and my Father are one, and you and your Father are one. I owe you nothing except to love you. You owe me nothing except to love me, in your own way, not according to my standards, in your own way to whatever degree the grace of God gives it to you. Whatever I do is not from a sense of duty or legal relationship, but from a sense that I am my brother's keeper, that I owe it to every man to express the love of God. And this alone is the reason for my actions. And I expect nothing other than that of you. And so it is that as we set God free, so that we understand that God owes nothing to us, God owes only to God, and God is forever fulling, God, fulfilling God's obligation to himself. We need not remind God of that. God is the all-knowing, infinite wisdom and love. We need to remind ourselves, however, that we live by the grace of God, and the grace of God is my sufficiency, and we need therefore hold no man in bondage to us or under obligation to us. Even if they owe us money, let's forgive it 
so that we absolutely have the freedom to receive our grace from God, not from man whose breath is in his nostril. Then can you not see that this is a life of freedom? And the reason it is a life of freedom is it's a life lived in God, through God, by God's grace. And who can take that from us? On our coins we say, in God we trust. And you know we don't. But let it be true in the experience of one who shall become a majority with God. Let it be true in the two or more who are gathered together in thy name. Let it be true in the ten righteous men in a city, and watch how the entire city is saved. Let it be true that a few individuals lose their fear of man whose breath is in his nostril and of all his temporal power and realizes his life in God, and then see how this will externalize itself as some divine idea in the mind of some president or premier, prime minister, somebody or other in the right place that will bring forth freedom and liberty. Don't accept for a moment that this world is facing either extermination or slavery. Don't believe for a moment that it is facing war or surrender. Those are not the alternatives. This world is facing only one thing. A release from fear through the understanding of God's grace and God's freedom and God's life. This world is really facing a need for ten righteous men, or two or more gathered together, or one who shall be a majority. The only need this world has is for the few who will really save the world through their understanding that we are not facing human alternatives, that we are not facing death or destruction, that as a matter of fact, temporal power isn't power, and the freedom doesn't come through temporal power but through God's grace. In thy presence is fullness of joy, fullness of life. In thy presence. Only in the realization that I and the Father are one do we live in that presence and experience fulfillment. But see this. Good cannot come to you from outside your own being. It must come to you as an act of your own consciousness. If you would be free, and if you would help to free this world, then take these two or three minutes every hour of the day and as many hours of the night as you're awake to realize that where I am, God is, and that means omnipresence. To realize that freedom is a spiritual quality, not at the mercy of man or temporal powers. Consciously know this truth, and you'll be surprised how widely you are broadcasting it, because what the Father seeth in secret he rewardeth openly.
Everything that takes place in your consciousness in silence and secrecy is broadcast to all receptive consciousness throughout the world. You need not pray openly or publicly. You need, need not make your affirmations of truth to be seen of men. Be assured of this. There is more power in a ten seconds of realization that takes place silently and secretly within you than in ten hours of talking or outwardly praying. There is only one reason that I take an hour here to say these things to you. There is no power in my hour of speech. The power is in your acceptance of this within your consciousness and then abiding in it as I do. A moment or two, a minute or two of every hour realizing thy grace no man takes from me. That which God hath joined together no man can put asunder, and God has given me my freedom. I have freedom only by God's grace. I know good-hearted individuals in the world that want to give it to us. Freedom is by God's grace. But this truth consciously realized this prayer, silent prayer, secret prayer, but everything that takes place of a spiritual nature in your consciousness is broadcast onto this entire world. And just those moments of prayer, of the realization of the non-power of the external world, will awaken somebody, will reveal a truth in the consciousness of somebody, Washington or London or Paris or Bonn, Moscow, somewhere, and there'll be an awakening and a realization. Why do you think the Master said that my words will never pass away? They weren't written. They weren't broadcast, but they never have passed away. Why? A word of truth entertained in consciousness is never erased. And so it is that our silent prayer, our secret prayer, the prayer that we indulge just one minute at a time or less, the prayer of realization, thy grace is our freedom, and this is not at the mercy of man whose breath is in his nostril. This alone is sufficient to free the world. Truth is powerful. Truth is all power, and a secret is this. Truth is the only power. But ye shall know the truth before it is power. Ye shall know the truth, know this truth. Freedom is spiritual. Freedom is the gift of God. Freedom is omnipresent. Freedom is invisible. Freedom is never at the mercy of man or temporality. Never again should we fear a lack of freedom. We should only fear if we withhold freedom. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joel. Thank you for your talk. Thank you for what you're sharing. Thank you for your recognition of truth. You see that his words go on too. It's like that's why we're here. And that's, that's the amazing thing. It's like he, and that is given. So we need constant reminders of that. And this is also um, one of the reasons that in fact we're like starting a new day all the time. It's like, okay, 
dying daily not like on not only once a week or something or only on sunday no every day dying daily into our humanhood like taking away for just a moment all the values and beliefs that we have put in in this world in this idea about ourselves and see that you can say experience freedom here right now by just doing that and there's nothing stopping you from doing that in fact only your own beliefs now this this talk is pretty full i i realize that too it's like um, this is uh, great because in fact this it is like a pivot point where something can occur you need to face the fact that you're uh, in bondage as long as you think that you abide in time and space in a body you see Joel says freedom has nothing to do with this body there's not it has nothing to do with uh, bring being free to do something or being free to make something or being free to none of that it's like no freedom is an is, is an aspect of of your uh, divinity like literally it is what you are it is an aspect of truth it is what love is you could say is what freedom is so nobody can take that away it, it is it like doesn't need to be protected but it, it doesn't need to be given away by you like in fact realized by you in order for it to to be there in your consciousness well joel has repeated that many times today in the book in this talk it's, it's very much the same so it's it's um, uh, great to hear it in different ways so rest me to say thank you so much for joining today next week we'll have our last meeting of this sequence then we start the 7th of july a new sequence that goes on up to september so if you want to participate in that please let me know and um, now in this summer sequence we do many things like there's a summer session idea and the summer session is in fact you can sign up for that too then you have like three most weeks three meetings or four if you want um or and some weeks there are two or a little bit less so there's a whole schedule anyway i don't <laughs> i want to share everything about it but it's more like there's an um joel will come to us also many times at least every week um in the tape group but also in this um anthology of enlightenment as i yeah as i called it as it came to me to share in which we're using all the expressions of illumination of uh, recognizing the truth of you um given by the masters from the east from the west in expression through jesus christ um, and so forth so if you want to say receive more information of that just let me know or go to the website ewehub.com and you'll see about that so th thank you so much for everything i'll play a song and see if there's a question um, and answer that first